Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of I Am Christina D'Arcangelo. I'm so excited to be here today. It's the month of February. It's Black History Month. Love is in the air. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Hence the reason why CD works rose-colored today. <laughs> but with me, I have Dozier, who I have been following on LinkedIn for quite some time. Not a stalker, y'all, but I've been watching his good work for the past, I don't know, a couple of years now. And I decided that, you know what? It's time for us to have a chat and why not on CD? So welcome to my show. Thank you, Christina, and uh, appreciate it. I'm, I'm happy for your invitation and uh, honored to be here. A beautiful day today, too, outside. I didn't even have to put a hat and a uh, overcoat on. I left it in the car. That is a good day in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Great day to have a podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. And you're not that far from me, actually, physically right now, which is ironic. We talked about that before we yeah. got on today, which I'm really excited for us to talk about today a little bit if we can. But would you mind talking about your background? You know, where you've come from, what you've done throughout your career, where you are today, and where you wish to be by the end of 2022. Wow. Um, yeah, where do we start? I'm born and raised in Philadelphia. Um, was brought up with uh, two parents, uh, educators. Uh, mother was a uh, home economics teacher uh, in the Philadelphia public school system. Got her. Uh, doctorate in education media. And my father was a professor at uh, Cheney, Cheney University. I grew up, yeah, on both campuses. Uh, they met at grad school at Temple University. I grew up at my mother's PhD um, doctorate came from Temple. And uh, I grew up on college campuses, literally. And uh, education was always a priority in the household. And um, then I, as I was aging, uh, getting older in my teen years, my mother, uh, my parents had divorced when I was uh, five, um, grew up on two sides of Philadelphia, which was very interesting um, in different cultural neighborhoods. And um, I, I ended up here where I am now at my alma mater of high school. Uh, I did one year at Central High in Philly and then my mother and my brother and I uh, came to this, my mother found this wonderful boarding school, uh, the Church Farm School, which is in your area, 45 minutes outside of Philadelphia and ended up with a basketball scholarship to Lehigh University, went on a 18 uh, year professional career around the world, landed at 30 in Cyprus, stayed there, played my final 10 years, and then that's where I built um, this beautiful biotech company that I have been positioning and maneuvering for the past nine years. Uh, we were able to successfully um, exit an uh, accelerator and then got us into a business incubator. Um, at Lehigh University. I've been there for three years, three and a half years. I've been finished my work there uh, for the last year and a half. And excuse me, uh, at the end of this semester will be two years and I've just been positioning the company and just uh, gave my exit letter and uh, video call uh, with the university. Um, and we are leaving and exiting at the end of next month. And uh, we, we're headed into some really uh, phenomenal situations. I have a great team of people that I'm putting my company together with, with a phenomenal um, early stage investors. My mother's sister, Dr. Carol Janaret is the co-founder of the company. She is the chief science officer. Uh, this is all her technology uh, that she has been working on for 
50 years and plus and uh, <clears throat> nine years ago I got an epiphany after uh, being a team manager at the uh, London Olympics for Nigeria's Olympic basketball team and went back to where I was living in Cyprus and got this epiphany uh, because I do a lot of market research and had been really heavily studying agriculture and market trends for agriculture and especially in Europe where there are, it's heavily regulated as to what can come in and out of the European Union and uh, by tracking that I called my aunt I was in the living in Cyprus in the Mediterranean and and called her and said I need to come home and speak with you and that's when I pitched her about the world is ready uh, they're talking about sustainability and um, climate change. And I came and said, I think we have an opportunity to commercialize your discovery and your invention. And I set home here and nine years later, here I am. And we're, we're on some very unique groundbreaking results from uh, five years of field trials that I personally managed every field trial and I rolled up my sleeves, got to learn the lay of the land of farming. And it's just been a phenomenal journey. And uh, we've done some things the last eight months I've spent on a farm in, in the Amish community, learning about their micro farming and uh, macro farming and micro farming traditional legacy techniques. And we are today, this afternoon, I go with my team uh, into negotiations for a first collaborative grow within that community. That is so excited. Um, can you explain to, I know what the grow is, but <laughs> can you please explain to our viewers and listeners what you mean when you say grow? And by the way, I'm so excited for you because, you know, um, you. Without, I'm not going to say any more, but I'm just so excited for you because I don't want to steal your thunder. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Stay excited. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this, this this whole thing is about energy. Uh, what what my aunt, Dr. Janaret, Carol Janaret, what she discovered in her discovery is utilizing um, basic fungi naturally occurring in all soils. Uh, I think this it, it is this um, Netflix. Uh, fantastic fungi last year just brought, brought on this whole explosion of interest in mushrooms and fungi. Well, my aunt, Dr. Janaret, works with the mother of the mother fungi of the fruiting bodies, which are mushrooms. Oh, wow. So we're talking the fungi, the mothers that produce these, these mushrooms, and they're in the soils. And she currently is the only scientist in the world who figured out, really figured out all about what we call in the science field, mycorrhizae uh, fungi. And ours is, there are two types, endo and ecto. And in all science literature, they say the endo works with um, non-woody plants and the ecto works with woody. What Dr. Janaret has figured out is how to make an inoculant that works for both. That's amazing. And we only work with ecto, uh, the woody ones. And what she did was she figured out how not only to make those fungi really work for woody plants, but they also form the, the relationships which are symbiotic with the non-woody plants as well. So we're talking, we're on the verge here and we've achieved these phenomenal results. Uh, Forbes wrote an article about some of the results that we've achieved. Uh, that article came about from our 2019 trial. Our 2020 trial was even more phenomenal. Uh, they're all phenomenal in different ways because I get to test on different strains of 
cannabis, we've tested on trees, cash crops. I've sent this product to Puerto Rico for trials after the hurricanes in 217 and brought a farm back to life just like that. And uh, amazing. it's just amazing. Sent this to Kenya. We got groundbreaking results that people have never seen in, 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 in life. And what is coming is this is all about sustainable, eco-friendly. There's nothing genetically modified in anything that we do. It's organic. And we just, this is, this is for us. And with myself being a former athlete, once you finish that career, your body needs to heal. Mm -hmm. And this is part of the way of how I have been healing myself. Um, even just with Dr. J's fungi and cannabis products, and now we've targeted hemp and have found a very great niche with hemp and in the Amish community and here at my uh, high school, which we're negotiating a future landing spot here. And it's just a phenomenal time because these fungi make plants grow healthier, larger, and the, the nutrient content inside of whatever is grown increases <laughs> the seed production. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say output. sustainability, right? You know, everything, mm -hmm. everything. And now with all of the pandemic, uh, the COVID, it has challenged a lot of the um, supply chains, food prices are driving up. Mm -hmm. And what we have here is an opportunity that with an inoculant, you just need this in some soil. Um, and you will see some amazing things. We're coming to market with a two inoculants, but we'll be coming to the market with many more um, and a nutrient boost solution that you put in a soil drench two to three times a week. We'll have inoculant sprays. Our last trials, I was able, usually all this work takes place underground in the soil. And in our 2021-20 trial, I unlock something based upon the other four years of trials. Trials, I was able to bring our inoculant above ground and achieve some really groundbreaking results and success. And we're ah. extremely happy. Uh, we're exiting an incubator at the end of next month, and we're just everyone involved is extremely happy about where we're where we are right now and where we're headed. That is amazing. It's so amazing. I am um, where I'm, I'm lucky enough. I've, I've been selected as a CRO and partner from my tech platform, spectral analytics, precision oh, telemonitoring wow. to work awesome. on philocybin studies in Canada for MDD major depressive Whoa. disorder and migraine. Um, my sister, I, I watch her suffer. Um, she's disabled. Um, with migraines, literally, like she gets cluster migraines. And like yesterday, for example, she must have had five of them in one day. And her face literally will droop. Um, she has massive swelling, she can't see she can't eat she can't she, she's on the floor. Um, so personally, and you know, I'm a cannabis patient. And, you know, so I believe in cannabis from, you know, for my autoimmune diseases, um, and, you know, my background in the research side of things, for me, what you're doing personally ties with my heart because I have my own family members and, and also what potentially you can do in the mental health space with this is so huge because it's a big unmet need. need. I mean, I, um, I lost my brother uh, January 9th this year. And he died of COVID. Sorry. sorry. And sorry, I'm not trying to be depressing, but there's a reason no, why okay. I'm bringing this up because you'll see the Please. parallelism. Um, he died of COVID and he was in multi organ failure. So he was a perfect storm. He had heart failure. 
He died at 43. So you're probably mm. going, wait a minute. I don't understand this, Christina. Yeah. How could he be? Okay. So this is where it ties back to my earlier statement about mental health. Yeah. He suffered for two decades, at least that I know of with mental health. He abused mm. opiates to treat his mental health, which thereby deteriorated his heart. So when I was pregnant with my son last trimester, January of 2012 into January of 2013, my brother was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. He had a defibrillator. He still abused opiates. Last year, he was in the hospital 11 times for his heart, infections, all kinds of things. And every time he went in, toxicology reports reported use of opiates. I found out at his death, because I was the person responsible then to make decisions, that he, in fact, was also schizophrenic. They were treating him for schizophrenia with his COVID. So this is something that's very near and dear to my heart. Plus my son, who's nine, he'll be nine in the end of this month. He has six developmental disorders, all in mental health. So I have a big family um, genetic mm -hmm. Uh, predisposition, if you want to say, to mental health, you know, so this is really important work you're doing, and your aunt, and your team, because it's so much needed, and not only just there, but how you can help all of these other companies now yeah. be more fruitful and sustainable Absolutely. with your technology. Absolutely. Um, mental health now worldwide issues are at an all-time high right now due to the COVID mm -hmm. and the pandemic. And the world is really suffering in terms of mental health and all kinds of things that are causing people to act out in all kinds of various ways because their lives have been disrupted. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all it took was mm -hmm. a global lifestyle, everyday lifestyle disruption. Mm -hmm. And now human beings are trying to process in their minds how to handle, how to survive and how to go forward. So mental health is something that is going to be talked on for decades be mm -hmm. because of this pandemic. And that is the result of it. Now mm -hmm. we, we have to figure out ways how we can uh, naturally address it mm -hmm. and naturally how to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Just as in your family, I have relatives who also have mental health issues. And, you know, while I'm thankful that I haven't had to deal with that personally, um, but I always say athletes go through many depressions almost daily or weekly <laughs> mm -hmm. because of the highs and lows of the sport. And mm -hmm. if you apply that now, I'm no longer an athlete, apply it to life. Entrepreneurship. We're entrepreneurs. Yes. I was thinking when you're yeah. talking about, I was an athlete too. I didn't play pro or anything, but I played basketball. Play? I played basketball. I'm, I'm, when you? I stand up, I'm five ten and a half. So <laughs> I'm a tall lady. Well, I'm six five. So. <laughs> My brother was six four. Awesome. Yeah, That's like awesome. sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but yeah, no, I, I can, I, I, I get it. I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, being an athlete, then you're now, you know, you are already entrepreneurial. Then you're going forward with this nine-year gestation. That's basically what you were doing with this company. And I like the word gestation because it yeah. coincides with what you guys were doing, really. You were growing, Absolutely. you know? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, I'm literally growing all over again. And, and, and what I really mean is, I'm, I'm literally and figuratively growing. Um, some years, a few years ago, I was balding. Oh. Ever since I've tapped into the cannabis industry because of uh, Janaret's eco-friendly fungi, Dr. J's fungi, my hair's grown back. 
and it's growing back. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've lost, I, I, after retiring, I have a friend who also played basketball at Lehigh, who I helped get a scholarship there, who's from Philadelphia and then went back to school to become a nurse, a male nurse. One of our biggest conversations is about athletes when they stop playing, people don't talk about the health issues that athletes no. go through once they stop because mm -hmm. no one is teaching about transformation and how to be healthy in that transformation from athlete, whether you're a weekend warrior or whether you're a youth athlete. But whenever that ceases, there are habits that athletes utilize that people, once they stop or they transform or transition out of athletics competitively, they still keep the same habits. Right. I was one of those people and I ended up, my playing weight was anywhere from high school, 205 college. I put 10 to 15 pounds on uh, pro. I went up to 240 at times, 245 after retiring, I ended up at 280. Wow. And, and I have been on this journey and I've lost 60 pounds, 60, 50 to 60 pounds. And all this took place in the last 12 years. And I've just been on this journey. Well, there's hormonal changes. Men don't yeah. talk about hormonal changes. I'm not trying to call you out there, my friend. No, it's but okay. you We're know, human. I'm a researcher. So I think, yeah. you know, I, my brain is, and I'm highly functioning ADHD. So <laughs> God. that's awesome. Don't be oh. all. <laughs> So when, in some form or another nowadays. So when you, <laughs> when you were talking, it just came in, put it down, hormones. That's part of the yeah. problem. And men don't talk about their hormones. And no. it's not a sign of weakness. It's a body no. change. You changed your body. You don't do the same yeah. things anymore. So, of course, yeah. your body is going to suffer. Not only did you, I'm sure, have the hair loss and the weight gain, but then you're having pain in areas that you didn't necessarily yeah. have before. There's aggravation mentally because, like, you're not doing what you yeah. used to do anymore. You're not doing, you're not seeing your friends anymore. There's that, too, exactly. that people don't talk about. They just think, oh, athletes, they got it made. They're retired now. They're sitting yeah. on the couch eating and drinking, you know, Cavassier or something. The health issues that athletes go through post-retirement or transitioning, people don't talk about the diabetes, mm -hmm. the high blood pressure, mm -hmm. um, the heart conditions, uh, organ damage, because if you continue those, those same habits without the same level of physical exercise, we don't understand as humans, you have to scale back your habits. Mm -hmm. and, and what I had to, to learn is moderation mm -hmm. because I'm not doing that level of activity that's burning up calories at such a fast rate. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, my, my, my physical activity is going for an hour long walk rather than right. Two and, th two and three hour practices at a time. And we used to practice two times a day with mm -hmm. the weightlifting session. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all day. You were all, all day, day working long. out. I mean, what, right. What you do now, you're working here, right? All the time, yes. which is really, I mean, that's a lot. I, you know, that's one thing my dad, you know, God rest his soul. He was a blue collar guy. So I grew up blue collar. And one of the things he would say to me is, you know, Chris, you have a harder job than I do. Yes, I have to physically do things, but you're here all the time, here all the time. It never stops. So you went from being a full-time athlete where you're up here too. We just talked about that earlier today, up here yeah. and then physically constantly. I mean, it's like yeah. you were in a marathon all the time. Now yes. you're here. And the marathon is here too, because exactly. it's not stopping. <laughs> it doesn't stop. It will never stop. Cease that marathon. And I retired from professional sports at the age of 40. So long career, image, 
you we athletes don't realize how much damage it's not just your injuries it's the toll the pounding your spine your disc your nerves everything and once you stop you start to feel it yeah <laughs> you really start yeah to feel it. i mean then, it's it's you, tough thank you everyone for joining us today and as we always say we are the same i am christina d'arcangelo